Even though he's a multi-millionaire at the top of his game, life hasn't been all unicorns and rainbows for LeBron James. Despite his success, he's had his fair share of hardships. From his childhood to the passing of a close friend, here's the tragic real-life story of LeBron James. Today, LeBron James is a superstar and a brand, but the situation was very different back when he was in school. James was already a total prodigy and possibly the most hyped high school basketball player ever. How good is LeBron James? Well, simply put, Dan, LeBron James is the best high school basketball player I have ever seen. However, his early career narrative was still very much one of rags to riches. This is because his childhood was, to put it mildly, difficult. James's father, Anthony McClellan, had a long criminal record and wasn't really present in his child's life. As a result, his mother, Gloria, had to look after James and two other kids in difficult conditions. She said of the situation, I wouldn't wish some of the stuff we went through on anyone, not on my worst enemy. Young LeBron's home front certainly seems to have gone through some pretty turbulent times. For instance, he said that while growing up, he witnessed killings, and he's mentioned that his family once had to move houses no less than six times in just one year, which sounds like an absolute nightmare. It's usually always awkward when someone tries to come up with a nickname for themselves, even other legendary players. Such was the case with LeBron James, who CBS News tells us indeed experimented with a self-imposed nickname in his youth. Back in his high school years, when the hype really started to catch on, he started referring to himself as the Chosen One. In all fairness, LeBron now thinks that's just as awful as you probably do. In 2009, he commented on the moniker in his book Shooting Stars, while also pointing out that the world was offering him ample opportunities to start getting a little big-headed. I was arrogant, dubbing myself the Chosen One. In hindsight, I should have kept quiet, but I also was what I was, a teenager where every reporter in the world seemed to be rushing toward me at once. Fair point. Besides, these days, he has tons of better nicknames. Imagine being a teenager who suddenly becomes one of the most famous people in the world. Combine this with future prospects that are filled with even more celebrity, downright ridiculous amounts of money, and constant adulation from the media and public alike. Oh, and you're also 6'8 and built like a Greek god. Do you think this would go to your head? As CBS News tells us, LeBron James freely admits that it did. For a while, the constant hype and attention turned him into a self-admitted jerk. To be fair, he was 17 years old, had just appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and everyone was buzzing around him and his high school teammates. So it makes a lot of sense that he might start becoming an unlikable guy. In his book Shooting Stars, James paints a grim picture of the era, saying, We had become big-headed jerks, me in particular, and we are to blame for that. But so are adults who treated us that way and then sat back and smugly watched the self-destruction. LeBron James's star was already shining bright in high school as the top player in the country. Unfortunately, his senior year, 2003, became a lot more chaotic than anyone could have foreseen, thanks to some unwise decisions regarding gifts. That year saw young LeBron in hot water because he accepted a luxurious Hummer as a present, which some suspected to violate Ohio State's amateur bylaws. However, it turned out that the vehicle was actually a gift from James's mother, Gloria, and a two-week investigation ultimately cleared his name. Still, his season later ended prematurely because, mere days after the Hummer investigation was finalized, it turned out he had also accepted some sports jerseys as a gift. The problem with the whole thing is that it means he capitalized on his athletic ability, and he was therefore technically ineligible as an amateur. After some legal wrangling, James ended up serving a two-game suspension and then regained his eligibility. His senior year ended with the third state title in four years. As CBS News reports, James looks back on those days with some bile. He compares the whole Jersey situation to a witch hunt led by the Ohio High School Athletic Association Commissioner, and he appears to remain quite bitter about the Hummer investigation and the way the media treated his mother because of it. After all, his mom had dared to borrow some money and buy an expensive birthday present for her virtually guaranteed future superstar son while they were still receiving rental assistance. In 2010, LeBron James was facing a decision. As NBA.com tells us, the superstar player had decided to leave his hometown Cleveland Cavaliers in favor of the Miami Heat, and he had to figure out how to notify everyone. Unfortunately, he chose to do so with an ESPN special program called The Decision. In this fall, man, this is, this is very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. Bleacher Report notes that it backfired immensely, especially because he didn't notify his old team until moments before the show started. Fans thought they had been deceived with the possibility of him staying, the Cleveland Cavaliers felt rightly insulted, and tons of people thought the decision was James's own idea and a sign that his ego had fallen off the deep end. How arrogant to get on national TV and slap the city and the team that supported you since you've been in high school straight in the face like that. In fact, even James himself didn't seem to enjoy the special, looking uncomfortable and embarrassed throughout the whole event. 
James's discomfort may be explained by the fact that the decision wasn't even his idea. The concept was originally pitched by journalist Jim Gray, and James's management approved it because they felt it was a cool way to raise some money for charity. They weren't wrong, as ESPN ended up donating all the advertising revenue from the decision to charitable causes, and Nike matched the sum for good measure. Unfortunately, this didn't earn too much goodwill for King James, and the whole debacle was an unmitigated PR disaster for him. You might have heard that in 2019, the NBA was in hot water over the Hong Kong protests. As the Daily Beast reports, this started when the Houston Rockets manager Daryl Morey sided with Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests on Twitter, only for Chinese sponsors to voice their concerns. As a result, Morey deleted his supportive tweets and apologized. LeBron James was happy to add fuel to the fire before the NBA shut down the discussion of the issue. When asked whether Morey should be punished over his public show of support, James made it clear he was highly critical of the Rockets manager's show of love to the protesters, saying, Yes, we do have freedom of speech, but at times there are ramifications for the negative that can happen when you're not thinking about others, when you only think about yourself. He later doubled down on his view, saying that Maury's comments could have harmed many people in a lot of ways. So many people uh, could have been harmed, um, not only financially, but physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's not exactly a coincidence that the Hong Kong protesters were soon burning and stomping on James's basketball jerseys on the streets. Unfortunately, we live in a world where a black athlete may be a target of unsavory, racially motivated attention, and even LeBron James isn't immune to the occasional racist attack. As CBS Sports tells us, one of the most visible attacks against him happened in 2017, when his home was vandalized with a racial slur just ahead of the NBA Finals. James took the racist vandalism incident in stride and turned it into a powerful speech about the everyday hate against African Americans. In 2018, the Los Angeles Times reported that President Donald Trump himself was accused of racist remarks against James. The basketball star had been quite vocal of the president's racial insensitivity issues, and he repeated these views in an interview with Don Lemon. What would you say to the president if he's sitting right here? Uh, I would never sit across from him. You would never? You didn't want to talk to him? No. I said that across from Barack, though. Trump responded by tweeting, LeBron James was just interviewed by the dumbest man on television, Don Lemon. He made LeBron look smart, which isn't easy to do. I like Mike. LeBron James's mother, Gloria James, has been known to ruffle the occasional law enforcement feather. According to the Miami Herald, she's been arrested on two occasions. In 2006, she was picked up in Ohio and had to face charges for driving while intoxicated. In 2011, she had another alcohol and automobiles run in with the law when she allegedly assaulted a Fountain Blue Miami Beach Hotel parking attendant for not being quick enough getting her car. She was promptly arrested, and as several witnesses supported the parking attendant's account and Gloria James's breath reportedly smelled of alcohol, she was charged with simple battery and disorderly intoxication. LeBron James's name is often mentioned when people question who is the greatest to ever play the game. However, his name is also pretty much guaranteed to be in contention when it comes to another, far less pleasing title, the most hated man in basketball. This isn't just the opinion of some bitter Facebook group either. The media has also granted him the moniker at various stages of his career. Biggest problem with the Los Angeles Lakers is LeBron James. In 2011, ABC News specifically referred to James as basketball's most hated player. In 2012, it was Bleacher Report's turn to give him the title. His decision debacle that saw him leave his Cleveland Cavaliers for the Miami Heat is usually the stated reason for the hate, along with his perceived inability to carry the load without super talented teammates to rely on. It looks like the hate's not about to die either. As recently as 2019, Essentially Sports wrote that according to Twitter data, it was extremely clear who the platform's users thought was the most hated man in basketball. Let's just say that the answer won't exactly shock you. James has occasionally done things that justify fan hate. LeBron James! filed to trademark the term Taco Tuesday. I don't know if you have to say it that way, but I'm just, you know, guessing. However, most of the time, he's merely been doing his thing. So perhaps the reason his reputation seems to be permanently in the red for many people is just a byproduct of his status as arguably the best current player in the game. On January 26, 2020, basketball lost one of its all-time greats when Kobe Bryant perished in a terrible helicopter accident in Calabasas, California. Bryant and LeBron James knew each other quite well, and Bleacher Report notes that they often fought side-by-side -side for Olympic glory. Both men were part of the gold medal winning Team USA for the 2008 and 2012 Olympics. James learned of Bryant's untimely demise at a time when the two men's fates were yet again intertwined. Just days before the incident, he'd surpassed Bryant on the NBA all-time scoring list, and the Black Mamba had warmly congratulated James with what would turn out to be his final social media post. Eerily, the two men talked on the phone just hours before the helicopter crash.
James learned of Bryant's fate while flying to a game, and reports say that the news impacted him greatly. Several people were seen consoling him after the plane landed. He eventually addressed Bryant's death on Instagram, writing that he never would have imagined that their talk that morning would be their last conversation. He also promised to keep Bryant's legacy alive by pushing both himself and the Lakers to be the very best they can be. To continue his legacy not only for this year, but as long as we can play the game of basketball that we love because that's what Kobe Bryant will want. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite basketball legends are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.